Well, here we are. Let's see. Big board, yada, yada, yada. Next war, blah, blah, blah. India, Pakistan, got it, got it, got it. Okay. So, uh, middle-ish turn three, basically at the end of... Uh, we went through the second strike phase, which was after initiative movement and combat. We did the second supply phase. We did uh, some of the basic movement and combat, and then had a look at, um, I kind of skipped forward a little bit and looked at the reorg phase, because that's the, the point of time in which we would then explore these hexes that were not detected like this. And, and try and understand and get a snapshot of where we're at from a victory point standpoint to uh, ascertain whether, it was, whether or not it was really worthwhile continuing to play. Oh, so um, here's the victory point telly. I'm going to push this down a little bit. My uh, plex is thin and warping. 42, I believe that says, 42 to 10. Allied versus non-allied, uh, six point value and five point value um, uh, sites with six VPs with uh, four VPs, I believe. And then there's a modifier for airfields, which is only going to add up to either six or ten points, one of the three or six points I should say so you can see it's not going to be a material difference to this number so I thought okay let's have a quick look and kind of add you know add all that up and you can see it's 42 to 10 so there's a very clear winner at this point in the game and uh, if we carried it through I then went and looked and found where the rest of well, all the ones I could find where the rest of the uh, five and six numbered counters. So like this is a six here, which you can't see because of the light. Uh, we, we know that one's there and that one's being cleared by us, but we don't know that this one here is a four, right? So that would be of no value, but we're still trying to clear it anyway, because we're trying to be good guys and not break the rules. And But this one, I don't know, where, where are the others? Oh, here they are here. These guys here. That's a five. This guy's a five. So they're going to clear, or I could do a uh, electronic detection on the next turn. Now up here on the far corner there, the, there's two up there that the PRC would get for sure. I added that into that uh, additional points down here for the 20. So this is a six turn scenario, and I believe at some point I said it was three turns minimum, and then there was a sudden death situation that's not the case i uh, must have been reading one of the other scenarios so if we look at the map and look at this current situation clearly there's an overwhelming wave of orange and green and there are uh, two divisions here uh, some prc stuck in the corner there that are very weak and then over here uh, near islamabad uh, this attack I, I got a really good result on this attack here and i knocked out uh, two steps in the mountains and it's pretty ugly. I'm using two mountain divisions to fight in here. A bunch of choppers and stuff. So there's really not a lot to stop this from happening. And there's an extra six points here to be more five points. Sorry, four points. It's a five factor unit. Uh, so we can pick up four more there. But even if I didn't, and let's assume that uh, they found them, cleared it and kept it the tally still is not going to get anywhere near close, right? So with a lack of units on the board, uh, no reinforcements coming, and uh, the replacement rate is very, very low, there's really no chance uh, chance at all for the, the Pakistani force to, to kind of fight back. So I think I'm going to call this one here. Lots and lots of fun. I could see how this could go many different ways in terms of uh, end result, depending on where, you know, these counters end up. It's, it's unfortunate that the way they, the, the dispersion of the 18 that matter, is there 18 or 18 total? Or is it 36? Now I have to look that up now, aren't I? Because I care about that. 
when I'm talking to you guys. 18 dummies. Uh, yeah, 18 dummies and 9 actuals. Oh, 18 total. Nine actuals. So I did find most of them all, but uh, a couple. So, because uh, that was uh, well, three and five is eight. Yeah, so I, I found most of them. All right. Uh, nevertheless, I think this game could be played again and you have a completely different experience because let's just say a lot of the fives and sixes were, were way back here, right? Well, that's going to totally change the level of effort that's required to... to you know, drive deeper into the the uh, Pakistani territory. Uh, I still think that it's a bit of a steamroller for the Indians. The Indians are just going to roll over these guys because they have the weight of the American forces. I'm thinking this almost would be an interesting three-player scenario where you give the Americans, uh, you know, maybe their air... And uh, the the three airborne or the two airborne units and the Marines, and let them go and try and acquire as many victory points as they can, and then the Indians do what they can do. As so you have two separate commands with two separate missions, and perhaps there's not as much information sharing going on, or maybe only electronic detection data is shared, uh, and no SOF uh, mission information is shared, or something along those lines. Kind of spice it up a little bit. Because uh, you just got so many, you know, so many brigades here that uh, are seriously, you know, uh, kicking ass, right? The Chinese are kind of a, kind of like, they're they're similar to the Americans in their capabilities, but I just wasn't able to really use them in combat effectively because I could never really get them synchronized with a. Uh, a Pakistani force. I, I, on the defensive, I, I ended up, you know, moving them to try and either block or support forces. And we, we lost an entire airborne division down here trying to reinforce an area without the support of Pakistani units. So that was a bit of a mess. Um, what am I trying to say here? I'm trying to say, well, A, it's done. B, liked it a lot. Fun scenario. It, I made uh, several mistakes during the gameplay. Uh, someone commented about not being able to electronically detect or or strike or use strikes, uh, cruise missile strikes against headquarters. You can do that. It's only it's only supreme headquarters that you can't do electronic detection on. <clears throat> so I did make a mistake with uh, cruise missiles because I was using cruise missiles and scuds against military units, and you can't do that. You can only use them against headquarters, MSUs, and installations and stuff like that, airfields. So that was an error on my part. Ooh, excuse me, it's late. Um, what else? You know, numerous calculation issues, got some things out of whack in terms of timing. I think you saw some of that with the live play. I was playing after having way too many drinks and I totally missed uh, doing uh, a step. But the cool thing about this game is I think you can go back and, and fix stuff or do stuff and it's not really going to cause a problem, number one. And number two, if you miss a DRM, you know, it's a die roll, one die roll modifier. Generally speaking, if you're attacking and you're on decent odds, it's not going to make a huge difference. There are some results where, for instance, you go from a zero to a minus one or a, uh, a, uh, a uh, here's an example here, a three to a two with a DRM where you're taking a step loss or versus not taking a step loss. Sure, that can matter. But in the grand scheme of things, if, if you're the allies and you're making a mistake, it's totally not a big deal because you've got units to burn and you can really afford to just get the absolute shit's knocked out of, knocked out of you and it's not going to matter. Packies, on the other hand, they're really having a hard time of it because you've got good defensive ratings, pretty good effectiveness ratings and uh, they're not, but they're just not, they don't have the punching power. They don't have the, they're, they're fighting way below their weight. You know, they're, they're, they're trying to attack uh, 10 defense, uh, 9 defense here. You know, these guys are, well, that's a 4, that's pretty weak, but they, these, these, uh, 
these armored units are pretty fragile for both sides. But there's not there's not a lot of there's not a lot of fighting capacity. And look at the look at the death toll, right? Look at this. It's just just a beat down. We took several Indian step losses. I lost two uh, battalions here. And this is the losses pile for the Indians and the, uh, sorry, this is the losses pile for the uh, Pakistanis and the Chinese. So aircraft wise, same deal. Look at that. And that's what's left. You know, there's plenty left. Very few losses. I don't even know where the losses are for the for the other guys. And there's a couple there. There's a few more lost over there. So there you have it. I I got to say I like the system. It's got me inspired to want to break out Korea, even though I know that is a much more substantial game, and I can imagine that will take a very long time to play solo with the Air War. I'm curious to do that. It ain't going to happen in the short term. So we're at 11 minutes. I'm going to wrap it up here. We can, you know, if someone's interested, I'll do a wrap up on the system and talk about it in a little bit more detail in terms of what I like and don't like about it and what I think it, it compares to or doesn't compare to. But other than that, this is it. Uh, I will probably be looking for someone to play this opposed either on Vassal or face-to-face. Um, -face. So if you're interested, let me know because I think this particular scenario, in fact, would be an absolute hoot to play. All right, all the best. Talk to you soon.